Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so, um, well, before I get started, I should probably say I got a bit of a cold here, allergies or something. So, um, kind of have a, some a stuffiness in my voice, so uh, bear with me. But um, anyways, I wanted to go ahead and make a video on uh, my checklist. It's kind of like my, uh, kind of like my prepping top off list. Um, it's basically an outline of the way I pr prioritize my um, preparedness st strategy. Um, and I pretty much, I pretty much prioritize it the way, you know, in my whole life for that matter. And the way you would prioritize or would want to prioritize um, yourself if you were like lost in the woods. So um, obviously the first thing you want to do if you get lost in the wilderness is establish shelter second thing would be establish heat or or water so it would pretty much be shelter fire water food so on and so on so um this is pretty much the way i i strategize my preparedness list so um you know and i definitely believe that it, in the realm of preparedness that making lists is probably one of the most invaluable things that we can do as preppers um, and just making sure that we go through those lists and um, make sure that all of our essential preps are topped off and um, all those areas um, in our in our plan are well fortified so I'm gonna go ahead and go through my my list the way I prioritized it and um, just kind of give you an idea of the way I strategize uh, my preparedness plan. So uh, first one would be shelter. So in my my situation as of right now, my shelter is my home. Um, some of the ways that I fortify my shelter, make sure that it's something that can um, that can sustain and through um, through tr trying times is I paid the home off. So I paid my debt off. Um, so that way, if the economy collapses, um, you know, I'm not stuck with a big payment and uh, with no work, no income, I can't make that payment. And, you know, I lose my home because I lose my home. <laughs> I lose everything. I lose my preps. I lose a lot of stuff. I'm in a bad state. So um, definitely my advice is to make sure that your home um, whatever that might be is as secure financially as possible. So, um, and then, and I know some people would say, well, you don't own, actually own your home because there is property tax. Um, yeah, I know. I, I, and I, th I got that covered. So one of the first things I did, because I did, uh, back in 09, when we had the housing crash, I was definitely one of those people that got caught up in it and I lost my home. I ended up homeless like that. I went from, you know, living the, the, the good life with a big, you know, big house, pool, hot tub and all that to in my truck driving, driving aimlessly, calling friends, trying to figure out where um, I can stay for the night. And that and I so I have a lot of experience with how quickly that can happen if you're not prepared. So um, as far as the property tax goes, um, well, I should start by saying so the first thing I did when I started prepping was I put all my focus on my home. I mean, I had food, I was putting the food together, but I knew that I needed a place to put my preps and that that place I had to fortify and secure uh, financially as well as I possibly could. So obviously the first thing I did was I paid off that home and made sure that the deed of that house was in my name and not some, some banker's name. Um, the second thing I did was I bought a cheap home which had very cheap property tax. So um, the property tax was so cheap that I was eight, what I did is I bought three years worth of silver, three years worth of property tax payments um, in silver. I also had three years worth of property tax in cash payments that I took that cash that I saved it was three years worth of property tax payments. I put it in an envelope and I wrote property tax payments, emergency property tax payments. So I had backup emergency property tax payments in cash and in silver. So worst case scenario, the economy collapses again. Hey, I don't have a mortgage payment, 
but the property, t you know, the tax collector is going to come. Here you go. At least that'll get me, you know, three years. I just, I try to do everything in threes if I can. So um, three years at that time, you know, was about the most I could afford. Um, but the property tax was so low that um, it was easy to put those payments aside. So that's what I did as far as my house is concerned. Um, the second thing that is on my list was, is fire um, or heat, a heat source. So um, I would say like in the winter time, um, you know, or if you're stuck out and stuck out in the wilderness, um, depending on, I guess, the weather that, you know, the uh, season that you're stuck, it, it kind of, um, it, it varies between heat and water. So if it's hot outside, obviously the second thing you want to do after finding your shelter is find water. But if it's cold outside, the first thing you want to establish is fire. So, um, this is how I do prioritize it, um, because, the cold where we live, the cold is more of a threat than the heat. Um, so in the summertime, I try to procure as much firewood as possible. Um, and um, I've gone to a great lengths to re-insulate my house and make it as well insulated as I possibly can. Um, I will say that our house, unfortunately, is we are very reliant on the power grid. Um, there everything pretty much runs off electricity in this house everything the septic um the water heater all of it so if the power goes out and when it goes out because it does go out at least a couple times every winter here you know a tree falls down and takes out a power line and then we're out of power for three or four days um we have a backup generator system that can keep the house functioning um and um so in order to fortify that I have to make sure that, you know, the generator is functioning properly. So I run tests during the summertime. I also keep fuel for that generator um, stored on hand. And then I got to make sure that that fuel um, stays stable. So I'll put additives in there um, to stabilize it and keep that fuel from going bad. So there's, you know, there's just definitely a lot of layers of fortification within these um, preps. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, it's the um, keeping that keeping the house warm is critical in the winter because our generator pretty much runs everything except for the heater. Um, and the reason being is that the to buy a generator, we looked into this when we were trying to figure out a uh, alternative power source for this house. The generators um, that would power this whole house, they you know. Uh, the heater, the heat pump, all of it. The difference between that heater, I mean, that generator and the generator we had was about 20 grand. So um, to run the heater in the house. So I just said, yeah, I'll just go ahead and um, I'll heat the house with a uh, wood stove and I'll just get a generator that runs the basics, you know, refrigerator, um, water heater, that kind of thing. So third thing on the list is water. Um, on this property we have we are on a well and the well is shallow which means the uh, pump that is that we that's required to pump the water up isn't that powerful it doesn't draw that much power um, because it's only pulling water up 30 feet from the ground um, so it's it's an easy um, thing to that well is we could probably I could probably put a hand pump attach a hand pump to it if I absolutely had to and get the water up that way because it's that shallow. Um, we also have a creek that runs through the property. Um, and then we have, I keep bottled water on hand, a couple cases of that, not a whole lot in that. The bottled water I keep on hand is really just in case we have to leave the house in emergency. Um, and then we'll just kind of grab a case of water um, if we're on the road. Uh, the other th water sources we have, um, as far as like containing that water would be like 55 gallon drums or three gallon uh, water containers. Um, and in, if I think there's an emergency or we're about to lose power, um, I'll go ahead and fill up some of those, those water containers just in case, you know, if the generator breaks down or the, uh, the loss of power goes on longer than we anticipated and we lose fuel, that we at least have water 
um, and that water allows us to flush the toilet. You can um, obviously drink it, cook with it, that kind of thing. So, um, and then the other final water source we have on the property is we do have um, kind of a rainwater catchment system. That wasn't the original intention. The original intention was to just try to shed water away because we do the way our house is, it's situated on the back of a hill. So we get a ton of water that just comes down the back side of the hill. So we have French drains all along the back side of the hill. And then we have a big French drain that runs along all or three corners of my detached garage. And that water goes through the drain and into a tank, small tank, which has a sump pump and that sump pump can pump water uh, wherever I need it to go. Um, so I can, you know, as long as there's water, I can essentially fill up uh, 55 gallon drums from that, from that system. So um, food, obviously I have the pantry here. Um, you know, like I said, I've done videos on this before, but really this pantry is just a means to sustain us long enough into, until we can procure a more sustainable source of food. That's really the whole purpose of this pantry. That and to just make make it so we have less trips to the store because we do live really far out. And, uh, you know, we forget something at the grocery store. It's a lot, or whatever we run out of something, it's a lot easier to come down here, grab it, than to, you know, have to uh, run half an hour to the grocery store. So. That's the main reason why I have this pantry. The second would just be, you know, the thinking is to sustain my, me and my family long enough until we can procure a, a more stable means of food, whether that be farming or stuff like that. Uh, the other source, we do have chickens, um, egg chickens as of right now. Um, we're going to be doing more of that in the spring. Um, and then I'm also going to be implementing quail. So we have some source of meat. So as of right now, we do have the eggs, which gives us uh, a fresh, uh, sustainable, uh, renewable source of protein. And then um, obviously there's hunting. I try to make sure to, you know, get a tag each year and procure as much meat as I can and then uh, store that meat, freeze that meat and keep it on hand. So that's another Another means in which you can, uh, we can get the food in here. We ha we're, we have, we're live, we live on quite a few acres, so um, there's plenty of hunting around. Obviously, it's not something that I rely on as like a, uh, as like a sustainable food strategy because everyone knows. I mean, if the food runs out, that's going to be the first go-to thing for a lot of people. And as soon as you, you have a bunch of amateur people running out into the woods with guns. Um, you know, desperately trying to uh, get food, they're just going to be shooting. It's going to be like the Wild West, and they're going to be um, chasing all that game far, far, far up into the mountains where nobody can uh, nobody can access it. So, uh, not it's definitely not a, um, a a source or something that I rely too much on as um, part of my food prep. So, um, so again, yeah, the the pantry, and then. Um, the farming that we do have, we also have a huge garden um, in the front and um, definitely looking forward to, I'm gonna be pretty soon here actually re-strategizing that garden um, this year, um, kind of new, some new strategies on trying to get more pollinators in like bees because it's a crucial part to obviously a successful garden. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of re reconfiguring my garden um, in, in that in that way. Um, fifth thing I have on the list is uh, medicine, um, taking care of your health. So for us, none of the none of our family is on any type of medication. Um, thankfully, um, I was on medication for some things, but I was able to cure all those things through diet and uh supplements um 10 years ago and maybe someday i can make a video on that but um yeah i you know i was definitely one of those skeptics in the beginning um when i, I remember having people kind of approach me and telling me hey, you shouldn't be taking that medication because it wasn't helping medication that i was on 
uh, was not helping me and my health was uh, was just spiraling um, downward very quickly very rapidly and um, you know as a result of just pure desperation I was like okay I'm gonna try some crazy hippie diet and believe it or not it healed me and so um, completely changed my whole view on food and all of that and curing things naturally so um, so your health obviously you want to stay physically fit you want to stay um, you, know, you want to eat good food as much as you can um, if you are reliant on medication I would say to stock up on your medication um, one of the other things that I did to fortify our our first aid was I I did purchase the um, the Jace medical antibiotic kit um, which I've shown in some videos but it's you know I would say especially with the shortages that have been taking place um, not only with all medicine but with antibiotics especially I can't remember which antibiotic but there's a couple uh, key antibiotics that they've been having a really difficult time uh, keeping in stock. So I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description where you can get the antibiotic kit from Jace Medical because it's definitely, I mean, if you have an infection or something, I mean, you know, uh, antibiotics are pretty much the only thing that's going to separate you from uh, death if you have a major infection. <clears throat> um the other thing I keep on hand are some good first aid books that are focused around first aid in an SHGF situation um, where you don't have access to a hospital. So medical treatments that you can do at home um, with stuff that you might have on hand in your home. Uh, supplements obviously are key for me. Um, I, I always talk about having Moringa. It's not in here at this moment, but my Moringa is um, one of my best supplements. Um, yeah, I'm sitting here sick. <laughs> Talking about how great my Moringa has been keeping me healthy, but uh, I think I just have allergies. It's not a cold or anything. Um, and then, yeah, I have the colloidal silver. I think I've done a video on that. I'm not sure. I don't, eh, maybe not. But the colloidal silver is something that is a renewable medication. I mean, everybody has their own opinions on it. It's it, it has its benefits. I mean, I've I, I've had my own um, experiences with it that where it's helped. It's helped with um, sore throats, um, stuff like that. Um, and it's something that you can make yourself. Um, let's see, going to security. So that's uh, number six, security. So. Um, and when I say security, I mean like a, a gate outside, um, security cameras, um, you know, locks on your doors, that kind of thing, making sure that, you know, the perimeter of your home is very well fortified and secured. Um, also keeping, uh, keeping good, strong communication with your neighbors um, and to be on the lookout. So I'm in a very tight community here. Um, I know all the neighbors really well, um, and I would say most of them I have a kind of a preparedness mentality. I know some, a couple that for sure, definitely um, full, full blown preppers. Um, but um, yeah, I just I try to keep in good relationships with all of my neighbors, and we all kind of to help each other out. So um, and, and stay on the lookout if anybody sees anything. We kind of allow each other to know. Um, part of that would be like communication. So I keep, I have their phone numbers as many of them as I can. I, you know, I give them, I, I give out my phone number to them. So if like we're gone and they see something strange in my property, they can get in touch with me. So that would be like another, um, crucial part of your security plan, you know, just making sure that you have strong communication with your neighbors. Um, motion lights, um, also, uh, securing your property, you know, from natural disasters like fire. So keeping the brush around your house cleared, um, things like that. Uh, trying to think of, yeah, there's, I mean, there's other things you could do. Keep dogs like people. Um, I know a lot of our neighbors all have like German shepherds. They all have watchdogs. 
Um, we don't. We have like a little tiny mouse dog, but she she serves her purposes. She'll get a mouse, <laughs> and she definitely barks. So so if she hears anything, uh, she lets us know. But um, yeah, we don't have any big dogs. Um, let's see here. Uh, as far as okay, so number seven is defensive strategies. So that would be you know your firearms, uh, making sure that you're you know. You, you have enough firearm, firearms, you have backup firearms, you have uh, ammunition for those firearms, you are proficient in shooting those firearms, you, you're getting training in shooting those firearms, um, and you're familiar with the inner workings of them so that you can clean them, you can take them, take them apart, you can replace parts, stuff like that, maybe have some extra parts on hand to keep uh, your all your defensive fire you know weapons um well maintained and uh be proficient in in those things um obviously and then physical fit, fitness i think also would um also play a part in your defensive strategies you know if you end up getting in some type of physical physical altercation you don't want to be you know so overweight and um so lack of exercise that you know you you uh you're getting winded out like within the first 20 seconds of the uh, altercation. So physical fitness is definitely part of your defensive strategy. Um, the eighth thing I have on here is currency. You know, um, if there is an economic collapse or there is a, um, you know, a massive hyperinflation and the, the dollar just becomes worthless, uh, do you have a means in which you will be able to exchange goods with people? um and exchange value so um you know obviously the first thing that comes to mind would be you know backup currency is precious metals gold silver that kind of thing so um definitely would recommend i mean i'm not a one a firm believer in precious metals i mean i can see their value um i know this is kind of a one of these hot topics in the prepping community but um i'm not totally sold on Precious metals being the uh, the thing that's going to swoop in and um, save save everyone from uh, an economic disaster, but I do keep it because I don't know. At the end of the day, hey, you know, better to, to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So, um, the other part of that the currency is just um, you know, and this also plays into like financial security. When I say currency. Um, bartering um and so keeping stuff on stock on hand that maybe you don't would use but that somebody else might need um and then you can exchange something that they have that you need and obviously et cetera et cetera but um paying off your debt again just reiterating that um you know trying to keep yourself as financially secure financially dependent as possible and you're just not relying on a bunch of creditors um you know you just don't want a bunch of creditors and very much stuff tied up in debt um i've been there and it's you know it um your whole world can come crashing down quickly um because those creditors do not care they do not care if you're starving. They will take the last piece of bread out of your mouth if if they could. So um, try to keep yourself as far away from lenders as possible. Uh, the ninth same thing I will I have on here is transportation. So your vehicles, uh, if you have a horse, um, a lot of people in our area have horses. Um, ATVs, you know, you want, you'll definitely want to uh, think about maybe getting a very uh, fuel efficient vehicle, like an ATV, something that, you know, gets 40, 50 miles to the gallon. Um, maybe even like an electric bike that, you know, if there's no fuel for whatever reason, you still have a, a way of um, getting to the grocery store, getting, you know, getting somewhere. Um, also, like with my truck one of the things i've done to kind of fortify my transportation and make sure that it can um it can be there when things get rough is i i've developed as many like skills as i can for fixing my truck so um like last month a friend and i 
replaced the transmission on my truck. We replaced the transfer case, um, the brake. So that kind of stuff. I mean, learn how to do that. Learn how to change your own oil. Learn how to do your own brakes. Um, and, uh, and just familiarize yourself, you know, with your vehicle as much as possible. Um, luckily for me, I have an older vehicle that it's not as dependent as a lot of these newer vehicles, like on the, um, on the computers. Cause I know that right now it's one of the things that a lot of people are struggling with is some of these newer vehicles are just so dependent on the, uh, computer components of the vehicle and then those components because they're all outsourced um and we, we end up becoming dependent on um crucial items um that are being supplied to us by somebody that could very well you know be our enemy and um um you know not having those things means not having transportation and again it's just it's one of those things like until you've lost you're, you have no idea of how, how that's going to affect you until it happens. Um, you have no idea, no sense of what it's like to not be able to go anywhere until, you know, um, until it happens. And it's uh, just one of those things. It's a very easy thing to take for granted. But um, there's been a couple of times where both of our vehicles, both my vehicle and my wife's vehicle, um, broke down at the same time and we had we couldn't do anything we had to like ask friends to take us to the grocery store I mean it was just not a good situation so um, yeah uh, transportation the things that you can do to make sure that those things are fortified and um, uh, is just make sure that you know you keep some extra fuel on hand um, you keep some, maybe some extra parts some oil that kind of thing and also make sure that you're maintaining those vehicles um you're changing the spark plugs you're changing all the gear oil the fluid because all that stuff needs to be maintained all the zerk fittings everything needs to be greased there's a lot of mechanics i noticed there was a lot of a bad advice that floats around the um that that industry um where they'll say eh, it's not really that necessary uh, you don't really need to change that oil you do need to change that oil you should be changing it at least once all the oil on your vehicle should be getting changed uh, at least once a year in my opinion uh so transmission fluid you should be changing that like every three oil cycles so for every second or third time you change your oil you should be changing your transmission fluid and changing your transmission filters and um and solenoids that kind of stuff so definitely a key component to all that and uh let's see what else here um and then the tenth thing this is the last thing i have on my list is entertainment so um you know once everything if something terrible happens full shtf but you've got everything covered your food you're good on food you're good on heat you're good on power you're good your your uh defensive strategy is totally intact your house is nice and secure um there's going to be a, just a time where you're going to be sitting around with your family, not doing much, but it's going to be a stressful um, time. And you're going to want something to keep spirits up. Um, and especially if you have kids uh, like I do, you're going to want to keep those kids in a good frame of mind. Um, you don't want them. You're going to want to keep them distracted. Um, so um, in that regard, we... We have DVDs, the kids, a lot of kids' movies. We have a lot of books. Um, we have games. We keep a lot of board games on hand, um, especially if the power goes out. And uh, we can keep the bo you know board games will keep us entertained. Um, magazines. Uh, what else? Um, what are they doing? And then oh yeah, and then like we always keep we have a couple tablets like um, for our kids. It's not something that we like to like have our kids just on their tablets, but it's kind of something that we keep as like a, a backup for emergency. So if we're going on a long trip, we're going to bring the tablets, tablets along to kind of keep the kids um, preoccupied and entertained when they're strapped into their, their car seats. So, um, you know, for those of you out there, parents out there, you know what I'm, what I mean, those long road trips, you want to keep your, 
your kids as uh, preoccupied as possible. So um, tablets is a source that we use. And so to make sure that those tablets are always charged. So if we have to leave in a hurry, we can grab the tablets and they're charged. And same goes with flashlights, that kind of thing. And all your electrical devices that require uh, charging, make sure it's, they're always charged and, um, and that the stuff that requires just batteries, make sure that you have plenty of backup batteries um, for that stuff. So anyways, guys, that's about the, uh, my whole list. Um, hope this video wasn't too long. Um, I made, I was able to make it through the whole video without sneezing once. So, uh, that was pretty impressive, but, uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and until the next time, stay prepared.